Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. And thank you for joining me tonight on Local 4. I'm Sean Lay. Happy Thanksgiving. Look, here's what's going on right now. Hazmat teams are giving the all clear after an explosion rocked General Motors Factory Zero this afternoon. Let's take you to the scene. The Detroit Fire Department responded early this afternoon, you can see here, and tell us a cylinder blew up. One employee was hurt. Emergency teams transported the worker to the hospital. We're told that worker is expected to be okay. Detroit Fire says the cylinder that blew up was not part of an electric vehicle. Now, we reached out to GM today. They sent us this statement reading, quote, an incident occurred at Factory Zero earlier today, resulting in one employee being transported to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Safety is our overriding priority, and we will continue to investigate the cause of the incident. That's from GM. A group in Detroit is working to make sure shoppers consider small and minority-owned businesses this Black Friday. Listen to this. Black Leader Detroit is partnering with some shops, boutiques, and restaurants along the fabulous Livernois Avenue of fashion. It's a fantastic spot. They'll be offering $50 gift cards to use at select businesses along this avenue. $50. And $10 gift cards that can be used at select restaurants. The gift cards will go to the first 300 people who stop by Joe's Cafe on Livernois between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. Organizers with Black Leader Detroit say it's an opportunity for shoppers to purchase unique and specialty items that you certainly won't find at big box realtors. Well, we want the public to know that they can come support, you know, a local black business and also raise awareness about who we are as Black Leaders Detroit, right? So we're giving away $350 gift cards as well as uh, $310 gift cards for the food trucks that will also be here. And so that's, that's what they'll find out. They'll find out who we are if they didn't know and how we are an economic funding vehicle for Black-led businesses and um, nonprofits in Detroit and how to support and keep some of that money in the city. Absolutely. And $300 gift cards sounds great. Black Leaders Detroit says the gift cards will be available, of course, while supplies last. They'll go fast. A tradition, it's a tradition that's been going on for 98 years. America's Thanksgiving Parade, presented by Gardner White, did not disappoint today. Our Kim DiGiulio is there from the very start. The parade brings thousands of people to downtown Detroit. It is the perfect way to kick off the holiday season with so much to be thankful for. Go. The morning kicks off at 7.30 a.m. Some call it the parade before the parade with the strategic staffing solutions Turkey Trot. It's a tradition that's been going on for more than 40 years. Runners taking part in a 10K, 5K, or a one-mile run. Dressed to impress, of course. It's just a great day. Thanksgiving is a great day and it's a great costume. And when else can I wear my turkey costume? What's your favorite costume you've seen so far? Oh. The chicken. The, yeah, chicken. the chicken? The turkey. I mean, the turkey. <laughs> the turkey. I like the chicken and the turkey. As the trotters make their way through the streets of downtown, families start to arrive to claim their spot to get the best view of Woodward. Okay, so guys, tell me, how early did you get here to see the parade? Five. Five. 5 a.m. We got the best spot. Then it's time for the parade. 28 larger than life floats make their way down Woodward along with nine marching bands from local schools. Jefferson High School, Monroe High School, can't forget about SMCC playing at Ford Field Saturday morning. Go SMCC. The big heads and the distinguished clown corps did not disappoint. Also marching down Woodward were the celebrities from Olympic athletes to Broadway performers and the three grand marshals, U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow, CEO and President of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, Daniel Lepp, and sports broadcaster Mike Tirico. We always uh, it's good to see him on TV and whatnot, and so the fact that he's here is kind of amazing, yeah. But the biggest celebrity of them all, the big guy, Santa Claus, here to help kick off the holiday season. In Detroit, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. Fantastic event, fantastic parade. Now listen, a family of 10 works to rebuild this weekend after a devastating fire destroys their home. Here's the family and how they're calling on our community for help and we can help them. This Thanksgiving, that family's asking neighbors to come together for them so they can restore some just of the basic needs. Let's get right out to Eric Erickson live tonight who spoke with this family today and oh wow, Erica, you're right at the scene there. Good to see you. Good to see you, Sean. Yes, we're talking about basic needs. My goodness, a family of 10, but really a family of 13 because their grandbabies stay well stayed here. Take a look at this. First of all, you can see how, just how bad some of it is And the real damage, by the way, is behind the house and in the house. You can't even see it, but there's just it's pieces. 
it's just pieces. There's, there's really not much left. And this family is just asking this Thanksgiving for some of us to open our hearts to them tonight. Uh, be thankful for what you have. <laughs> be thankful for what you have because it can yes. be gone in an instant. Just like that. We heard a swoosh. For 56-year-old Portland Hewling and her husband Willie, things got real quickly. My daughter running up and down the street, hollering, somebody help us, somebody help us. The home they've been living in on Grixdale near Veach on the city's northeast side for over 20 years catching fire Friday after they say someone torched the home next to it. Boom! And it's like an instant. We were just on freaking real fire. It was like no little the house is on fire, the trees is on fire, the wires on fire. The fire department arriving to fight the flames, Portland begging them. Save my house. We have nowhere to live. That's all I got. Save my house. And they're like, we are, we're doing the best we can. But the damage already done inside clothes, family photos, furniture. Memories for 24 years. You know, everything we own. Destroyed not just by flames, but by the water and smoke. It's hard to wake up some mornings, you know, because you're thinking, what's next? The Hewlings without insurance, grateful to find temporary housing this Thanksgiving. Long term is, we don't know. We just don't know. So thankful that crumbling roof, falling Mr. Grandbabies by inches. I'm just so grateful to God that um, we got out, we get, they got out, they got out. So I'm not gonna complain about it because it's always somebody else worse off than you. Always <clears throat> somebody worse off than you. So it's, it's, it's okay, it's okay, it's all right. Yep. Yep, that's my house. Yeah. Yep. It's gonna be alright. It's, <laughs> yep. right. it's gonna be alright. It it's gonna work out. Yep. Things gonna work out. Well, they had to leave some of their clothes. These are just drenched and uh they smell like smoke. So if you can do anything for this family, uh there's a GoFundMe that they started, some of their friends started. We posted a link at clickondetroit.com. Reporting live in Detroit. Erica Erickson, Local 4. Basic, basic needs. You're standing there and there's the clothes right there, all wet, smells like, we're talking the basics here. So it's on clickondetroit.com. We're thankful for basics, you, Erica, Sean. for sharing the family story because I know our community will wrap our arms around them. We'll continue following this. Thanks, Erica. Absolutely. Taking a live look outside tonight. Chilly Thanksgiving. You can see there's some skaters down there on enjoying campus marshes. Ron, you should be down there with them. I know you're a skater. Uh, how long until the flurries start to fly here in the Motor City? You know, we will see them very soon out there, and you'll see them popping up on radar right now. So some of those showers popping up in Lenawee County right now, Sean. We'll see more of these developing over the evening hours, especially seeing more of that activity as we get into tomorrow. Right now, those temperatures are supporting snow showers. We're near freezing, 32 in Sandusky, 34 in Port Huron, 38 in downtown Detroit, 32 right now in Howell. It is going to be a cold night as those temperatures are falling down into the 20s. We have snow showers on the way and they will be with us tomorrow. Some minor accumulation is possible. So here's what we have in our forecast for tomorrow. Temperature starting off cold. Maybe you're getting your shopping done out there, lining up early for some doorbuster deals. You want to make sure you are bundled. It'll be 30 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning and those temperatures Temperatures not getting much higher, only into the lower 30s in the afternoon hours. Those snow showers again could leave us with a dusting of snow, and it's going to be breezy out there with those winds out of the west at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Gusts up to 25. There's going to be a bit of a wind chill. We're going to have more about those totals that are possible and what we can expect through the weekend coming up, Sean. We go with those temperatures. Thank you, Ron. A heroic victory for the Lions today. Did you watch it? Of course you did. A little bit of indigestion here on Thanksgiving. Watching this, making now 10 straight, 10 straight wins, guys. The first Thanksgiving Day win since 2016. Hobie was there. He has what fans uh, were anxious about right up to the very end. A couple of streaks were at stake for the Lions today, and both went their way at Ford Field. They got their first win on Thanksgiving Day since 2016, and they also picked up their 10th 
consecutive victory, which matches the longest streak in franchise history. The Lions were off and running on this Thanksgiving Day. They took a 16 to nothing lead in the first half. They built that up to 23 to 7 going into the fourth quarter behind two touchdown catches from Sam Laporta. But then the Bears made their comeback. Keenan Allen had two touchdown catches, and DJ Moore hauled in a 31 yard connection with Caleb Williams to make it a three point game. Chicago had a chance at the end, but they ran out of time as the Lions survived 23 to 20, getting to 11 and 1 on this season. Ultimately, man, that's a good win against an opponent that is fought every week. And this was the third game in the row, division game that these they, those guys have brought it over there. And um, so we did what we had to do to win. Eating the turkey after the Thanksgiving win is up there too, and and that's something that I'll never forget. And um, it was actually pretty good. That defense gave up some yards and 20 points in the second half, but three of their five sacks came on that last possession. We'll have more on that side of the ball coming up a little bit later in sports. At Ford Field with the Lions, Hobie Artigue, Local 4.